Later this year, Glasgow will be full of world leaders and environmental experts, tens of thousands of them, as the city hosts a huge climate change summit. The last 10 years were the second hottest decade on record. So what are we doing about cutting emissions? Our environment correspondent, Kevin Keane, has been finding out. They're the people who manage the environment we live in. But climate change has put the work of farmers in a different light. So this is the field, is it? This is the one, yes. Emissions from livestock in particular are high, and that fact could change the way we produce and consume food. So what have we got here? So here we have a few things. Um, there's a bit of linseed here and some oil radish. But farmers like Hugh Black are wellies deep in the fight. He plants crops over the winter which will never be harvested, but which perform an important role in reducing his impact on the environment. Why not do it? Because it costs more money. Why do it? Because we believe that it is better for the soils, which will help produce better, stronger plants in the future, and hopefully reduce all the um, fertiliser and reliance on chemical that we're becoming quite comfortably relying on and, and now having it removed from us. Take-up of this is low, but if cover crops were funded through a government subsidy, it could have a big impact. So what of those emissions that remain? Well, a scheme is being designed here at the St Fergus gas terminal in Aberdeenshire. Uh, the plan is to capture the CO2 from, uh, from here and compress it and transport it offshore for injection deep underground. Carbon capture and storage has long been talked about but never turned into a reality. Here, they want to create hydrogen from North Sea gas and use it to heat our homes. And they believe the conference coming to Glasgow is helping push forward their plan. All the technology we need is already well proven and understood, so it's really just a matter of um, getting the right support in place from government. Uh, we're hoping to have the project on stream by 2024, and we're hoping to have the hydrogen project operating by 2025. Heating is a difficult nut to crack, but here in Stirling, they're flushed with success. So this is a filtration system where we take the wastewater from the wastewater treatment process next door. Sewage is a renewable energy source which will never dry up, and the heat from the drains is effectively being reused. So what we're doing here is we're recovering heat from wastewater, and that wastewater will, will be there 365 days a year. So if we weren't capturing that heat, it would be discharged to the environment, and we're using water source heat pumps to do that. Still, one of the biggest sources of CO2 emissions is transport, but Dundee is continuing to charge ahead with the switch to electric vehicles. And this year, for the first time, it'll include two fully electric bin lorries. Last year, there were 30,000 charging sessions in the city, and the infrastructure is growing rapidly to meet demand. How important actually is that infrastructure in encouraging people to buy them? I think it's hugely important. So we always talk about three factors in, in making that transition. So one's the vehicles, the second one's the infrastructure, and the third one's the people. People need that confidence that they can get a charge, so people need to know that they turn up at a hub like this and there's enough rapid chargers that they won't have to wait and so they'll, they'll turn up and they will get that charge. So yes, it, it's absolutely vital to give people confidence to make that transition. So are these small individual actions having much impact? It's very easy to look at um, one individual's actions and to say, well, the, the actions of that individual are just going to be the tiniest drop in the ocean and will have no overall impact. But then you multiply those individuals up across the sector and you can transform the way that that sector is working. Glasgow might be the focus for the UN conference in November, but efforts to address climate change are happening right across Scotland, and they need to if it's to be successfully tackled. Kevin Keane, Reporting Scotland.